Massive injury news for Manchester United. Martinez and Lindelof both out. Will they be back before the end of the season? We'll find out later on. Also, Ineos have been in the dressing room talking to players and giving their vision for the future of Manchester United. Let's get into the news. Hello and welcome to Stretford Paddock. My name is Joe and once again I'm here with the news. This time I'm in Hanoi and it is so unbelievably hot uh, that you might see a lot of beads of sweat dripping and some of those beads of sweat are because of the heat but some of them are because of Manchester United's current situation. We've said before, we'll say it once again, the injuries this season have been an absolute disaster and United have got two more to show for ourselves as well. Lissandro Martinez and Victor Lindelof out for a month each. Now Victor Lindelof, we saw him come off in that game against Brentford. I, I, no offence to him but I think that is less of a story. He's a player that has come in, he's been a rotation piece, he's played well at times, he's played not so well at times, but we kind of know his situation. Lissandro Martinez is a very, very different beast for many reasons. Firstly, because he's arguably our most important player when he's fit. We know how good he was last season, we know how he helped sort of change and revolutionise how United played out from the back last year. We've not had him almost at all this season. And secondly, because he only just came back from injury. And the last time he came back from injury, he only lasted three games before getting injured again, again. So let's get into that. So this is Man United uh, official website. Manchester United centre-backs Victor Lindelof and Lissandro Martinez will be out of action for at least a month due to muscle injuries. Sweden captain, as I said, was withdrawn during the second half of last Saturday's Premier League game against Brentford with a hamstring problem. Uh, unfortunately, Leicher has now also sustained a calf strain in training and is unavailable for the next few games. We need to talk about this because Martinez got seemingly rushed back against Brentford. I don't know if it's fair for me to say that. I'm watching the game um, from a distance. We're all watching the game from a distance. We don't know what's going on in training. We don't know what's going on on the on the medical table, on in the scans, in uh, the fitness regime of, of Lissandro Martinez. But what we do know is he comes back, he plays 30 minutes, he goes off uh, at the end of the game, and then now three days later it's announced that he's injured. And there's two things that I'm thinking here. Firstly, why do we keep having this? How do we not take better care of our players? United have had more injuries to first-team starters than anyone else in the league. All this, oh, more days off, more this, more that. No one has had as many crucial players injured as Man United. Do the research yourself. Look it up. We all know it as United fans anyway. But in terms of players who would start every single week, no one has had more injuries for Manchester United. Uh, sorry, than Manchester United this season in the Premier League. It's absolutely astonishing. And one th hand, you think, bad luck. But the other hand, part of me thinks... Well, is this linked? Is it, has he been rushed back again? Is he you know, being forced into action too quickly? And a lot of people want to point fingers and I know that you know, the instant reaction is to go, whose fault is this? It must be someone's fault, it can't just be bad luck. And let's sort of have a look at that because I think that question does need to be asked. Are we rushing players back? Is Ten Hag fearing for his job and thinking, I need to bring players back a little bit quicker than maybe they should? Instinctively, you think that that seems like what's happening. I watched the games. I watched that Brentford game. I was up at 3 a.m. watching the game, as many people who live in this part of the world do every single week. So I'm, no, I'm, you know, I'm not special for doing so. But I watched that, and it was one of the worst performances I've ever seen by Man United. We weren't even a team. We weren't any obstacle for Brentford. They did what they wanted, and unfortunately for them, they couldn't score more goals. That's the only thing that stopped them winning that game comfortably, they, their inability to score. We were no obstacle to Brentford's playing at whatsoever, and that is an absolute farce. So then you think, OK, well, Ten Hag's probably fighting for his job here, isn't he? He needs his best players back as quickly as possible. He wants to bring them back in and forget the fact that they've been out for six months with a broken foot, another three months uh, with a knee injury. Let's just throw him back in. But then the other part of me thinks two things. One, he didn't get injured in that game. He got injured in training some days later, supposedly, according to the report from Manchester United. That's the first thing. And secondly, how stupid do we have to be? How idiotic does United's medical department have to be to bring players back before they're fit? That's like what a child would do. Oh, he's fit, play him. Well, he's not, is he? Because, like, as if they don't know that 30 minutes against Brentford, where we still drew the game, isn't worth another three months or a month or three weeks or whatever it is on the sidelines by rushing someone back. Surely they know that. How thick do you have to be to think that bringing a player back when they're still injured is a good idea? Either, either, either short term, because they're not going to play to their full ability because they're still injured, or certainly long term, when they get injured again. 
it would have to be uh, not just negligence, but a sort of almost kind of criminal negligence from United's medical staff to play people who are still injured. That makes no sense in the short term or in the long term. So let me know in the comments then, have Manchester United been at fault for this Lissandro Martinez injury or is it just plain bad luck? He's barely played any football in the last 12 months and maybe his body is still getting to terms with coming back to Premier League speed. Let me know in the comments. These injuries though, one thing is for certain, are ridiculous. United's four most appearance-making players in the defence this season are Dallow, Lindelof, Varane and Maguire. And you could argue, I mean I think Dallow at this point has cemented himself as the first choice right back, but two of those certainly don't start when everyone's fit. On the left hand side, I think Shaw, Reguilon and Malassia, United's three left backs, have played less minutes between them Certainly the Maguire has this season. I think they've played about the same as Johnny Evans has, who is our fifth choice centre-back, a 34-year-old, 35-year-old, brought in on a free to help rehab his injuries, who happen to be very good when he's played. That's not a diss on Johnny Evans. But all of our left-backs put together have made about the same amount of minutes as Johnny Evans has this season. That is absolutely ridiculous. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Moving on to our next story then, and this one is from The Telegraph, talking about how Ineos and Dave Brailsford in particular have been having having one-to-one -one chats with the players at Manchester United. Uh, let's just get into it. So it says here, Manchester United uh, players have held one-on-one -on -one meetings with Sir Dave Brailsford to find the Ineos vision to restore the club to its former glory. All sounds great, doesn't it? Apparently, there's talk of an overall uh, much more transparent uh, vision, much more transparent leadership team at Manchester United since Ineos have come in. It makes sense because it couldn't have been much more opaque than the Glazers have been. We have barely heard from them in the nearly 20 years they've been here. I think already we've seen more interviews, more chats, more pictures of, of Ineos and their staff greeting and meeting the players, the manager, the people at Carrington. We've seen more of that from them in the three months they've been here than we did from the Glazers in the 20 years or so that they've been here. Uh, there's, a, there's an interesting part here. It says, it's understood, however, that the players have not been asked to give an opinion on Ten Hag or his management, with Brailsford seemingly keen to not undermine the Dutchman, with United still trying to qualify for the Champions League and uh, with an FA Cup semi-final to look forward to. Outsiders are convinced that Ten Hag will eventually be replaced, but no indication of that uh, were given. Oh, sorry, no indications of that were given during Brailsford's face-to-face -face meetings with players, which centred more on structural, club-wide, and global matters. There's also a little bit of talk as well on Jason Wilcox, who looks as though he's going to be coming in uh, alongside Dan Ashworth. I think Jay mentioned that on the news yesterday, if you want the full details on that one. But it's interesting, isn't it, that we're seeing this presenting of vision from Ineos to the United players. You're doing the things that, I, I mean, it seems obvious. I know we keep saying this. It seems obvious. It does. You, what, you, you've just bought a company and you want to tell the employees of that company your vision for that company. Yeah, of course you do. And yet, these things are sort of revolutionary for United. We're not used to seeing these sorts of sort of phrases of transparency, conversations, one-to-one -one, uh, talks. Like these aren't things that we do. What we do is you just go, you know, the odd PR statement where you say. United can do things in the transfer market that everyone else could only dream of and then not sign anyone. That's United's usual way of doing things. It's just good to see uh, in the midst of what's been a pretty shit week for United fans, it's good to see that some things above the, the, the manager and, and off the pitch seemingly are going in the right direction once more. And we're still to see the fruits of this labour. I think it's a sort of six, 12, 18, maybe 24 month uh, tree that's been planted here. But eventually we will start to see that fruit. And I think sensible decisions made by good people eventually will help Manchester United. And we're not seeing it yet because they've not been here long enough. But I think that we're seeing signs that longer term, Manchester United has got potentially a bit more of a bright future. And finally, another thing I want to talk about here, and we don't normally do this, we don't normally sort of have a go at other broadcasters or publications, and normally I just want to talk about the news and what the stories are. Sometimes I'll disagree, and sometimes I'll agree. One thing I do want to say, in the mirror today, there's a ridiculous headline that caught me, that I saw it and thought, what's going on here? What have I missed? What have I woken up to? And that is, and this is verbatim, Man United News, colon, Sir Jim Ratcliffe battles dressing room unrest as Kobe Mainu claim made. I read that, and I think a lot of people read that and go, you know, what, Kobe Mainu's come out and slagged off Ten Hag or had a go at someone in the dressing room. Is, is there a quote? Is there a video? What's going on here? This Kobe Mainu claim, this dressing room unrest, just so you know, that's mentioned in this article, is at Nice. It's not even at Manchester United. It's talking about uh, how they're underperforming and how they're not doing very well. And then it says, as Kobe Mainu claim made, that's a, a quote from 
Jamie Carragher saying that he would have Kobe Mainu at Liverpool if he could have any Manchester United player there. To put those together like that with no comma, no colon, no nothing is just massive, massive clickbait. That is ridiculous to do that. So Jim Ratcliffe battles dressing room unrest as Kobe Mainu claim made. So if you see that headline anywhere, just know from me, it's absolute horseshit and you don't have to click on it. I've saved you a click there. Thank you very much. Right, that's going to be all from me in the most sweltering of, of positions. The only person feeling the heat more than me this week is Eric Ten Hag. We'll be back later on uh, today with Late Night Live. Jay will be back for that, so make sure you stay tuned and hit subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you get all your thoughts on these stories in the comments below. This has been the news. My name is Joe. We'll see you in a bit.